Welcome. <laughs> this is Uncle Sugar's Magic Circus. If you notice, there's a whole new there's a whole new set piece here. Yeah. Okay. It's beautiful. I need to tell you about this because a friend of mine, Dan Kahn at Naughty Woods, built this for me from from scratch, literally from scratch. Yeah. Him and his wife, technically, I guess you could say his wife did a lot of the work. Yeah. She's an amazing artist. <laughs> she did all the stain work. This is walnut. This thing is gorgeous, man. It's six feet. Six feet I by, hope it shows up good on the camera. I think it does. Yeah. A six feet by four feet American flag, distressed, all hand stained, filled with epoxy. This is my new bar. Yep. This is our new hangout table. So I have to address it. I also have to give a shout out to Dan Conner. Yeah, absolutely. So hey, what's this company? What's the name? What are you calling it's it? It's Naughty, Naughty Woods. Naughty Woods. Yeah, it's a play on Naughty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. K N O T T Y. Yeah. He's got a Facebook page. You guys should check him out if you're looking for a custom piece. Um, I'll tell you, it's not cheap. Like, it's custom work. It's custom work, yeah. But man, does it come out good. This thing is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. He's and oh, a... by the way, he's going to make a piece for Christina. Great. What's he going to do? Uh, we got that new closet with a lot of shelves and stuff, and he's making a cap for these. It's hard to describe. They're about three foot tall series of boxes. That have drawers in them. Okay. Uh, and he's going to make one cap like this to cover all the, the these small boxes. It's going to be cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll bring a picture for the show when it's done. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm going to throw some pictures up here. And I'll also put uh, Dan's link here in the beginning. Okay. So today I want to talk to you about something, Keith. Yeah. There's, a, there's a tremendous sacrifice that we do in the military. <laughs> and uh, most people think that what I'm going to talk about is combat or PTSD <laughs> or losing limbs and things like that, but uh -huh. it's not. One of the things that's one of the most stressful things of being in the military, and the Marine Corps is really one of the worst at it. No, I say worst at it, but we do it a lot. Prolific. Prolific. And that is having to pick up your entire family, kids and all, yeah. and move from one place to another, across the country. Uh -huh. Permanent change of station orders. PCS orders. There's a dude who sits up at headquarters Marine Corps. Yep. In my mind, he's got like a pegboard with, <laughs> with pegs in it, and names and holes. I see a lot of lights with Star Trek. Like, like, like that. Yeah. Lights with Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy's whole job is to say, this name goes in this hole. Yeah. And uh, as a result, sometimes, usually about every two to three years, Marines are moving their, uh -huh. moving their, moving their whole family, uprooting. Yep. It's, uh, it's stressful, uh, but it's also kind of hilarious. There's all sorts oh, of funny things that happen. Hysterical shit happens. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe uh, there was a letter this week. There was a letter. I, I'll be honest with you. I, it's to the point, I, I'm going to have to like rent the shed for the letters we get. We get so much stuff coming in. But this is an interesting letter. So this is from a young lady named Neela. No last name. I don't know. This is uh, Sal and Keith. I'd like to know how the Marine Corps moves people across country. My dad is a retired Marine. But when he retired, I was still pretty little. I, knew, I just knew we would move. I didn't understand the mechanics of it. But in retrospect, now that I'm an adult and I've moved myself and see how much work it is, can you discuss a little bit how the Marine Corps moves people from place to place? One time we moved overseas when I was a child, and that had to be stressful as well. Can you talk about that a bit? Neela. Sure. Absolutely, Neela. We'll do that for you today. And we're going to talk about PCS moves. And Keith, you got some special insight into this because <laughs> if I remember correctly, you used to be a moving man. I was a moving man. Uh, Why don't we start with that? All right. So uh, two or three centuries ago, I graduated from college and graduate first week in May, get commissioned that day. But I wasn't going to TBS till October 2nd. So May 2nd-ish till October 2nd. I had to do something, and you know my socioeconomic background, standard, you know, middle-class, blue-collar family. I never done. And my best friend, Mike Quinn, lived around the corner from me, and we were did everything our whole lives together, you know, Mike. And so we were going to the same TBS class, so we were in college together, so we moved back home. Which, you know, of course, you don't want to do is, you know, I'm a second lieutenant, but i got to live at home because I'm broke. Yeah, I live in the basement. Yeah. So we moved back home, and we had to do something. We had no money. So we got jobs as movie men. And we're getting paid under the table. And uh, you don't want to know. You, you talk about not wanting to see the sausage made. Yeah. You have no idea what happens to your shit when you move. That's hilarious. We uh, start. So all the young guys. like You know what it makes me think of? The Harlem Globetrotters. I get that Harlem Globetrotters music. <laughs> Stuff flying everywhere. And things. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. And it's. So everybody our age and younger was smoking dope. Everybody older than Mike and I, all the moving crew guys, 
we're alcoholics. And I don't mean like you and I alcoholics. I mean <laughs> like alcoholics. So we, the, the shop, the, the store, it was a storefront in a ghetto that we worked at. So we'd show up there in the morning. There's nobody there. It looked like they dropped the neutron bomb. The streets are empty. The older guys are across the street in the bar drinking shots and beers. The younger guys are out in the back in the lot smoking dope. What about you? Cause you're... No, me and Mike are just sitting there on your furniture, which we would drag <laughs> something out of the warehouse and put it on the sidewalk and sit there. And then the, the, the foreman would round everybody up and we off we go. So you have a whole day move or you have a half day move. So a half day move, we'd come back at lunch. So Sal's going to move just down the street or something. We move all your shit. Then we come back and get another assignment at lunchtime. Why don't we eat our lunch? So we go into the warehouse, pull the couch out, pull it out of the store. Now the neutron bomb effects have left. The streets are jam-packed with people. Guys walking down the street, a guy in bear shirts full of joints, just cruising through the crowd. Dial the joint, dial the joint, dial the joint, you want to dial the joint, joint, dial the joint, joint. I'm eating my bologna sandwich watching the show. Oh, look, I spilled some mustard on your couch. <laughs> just flip over the cushion, keep on eating. We're done with lunch, we put it back in the warehouse. That's terrible. Oh, it's, it gets worse by the minute. Yeah, you got to supervise a little bit, I guess. There was no supervision at all. <laughs> and they thought Mike and I were like the brains of the app because we weren't alcoholics or dope smokers. Yeah. It, you... You just don't want to know what happens. That's hilarious. So, I, you know, talk about supervision. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I didn't micromanage people when they were moving. Oh, you keep a good eye out. But what, what I like to do is I'd jam on, I'd put on the radio. Yeah. I'd jam on a good station. Yeah. Get that music crank, and it'd be the last thing that I was going to pack. It'd be the first thing i unpack at the new house. Uh-huh. What's the first thing you always set up? The TV and the stereo. Get that music going, yeah. man. And then people are in, like, a good mood. Yeah. Maybe you bring them some donuts in the morning. So oh, you always feed the guys. guys. Yeah, right? And then always feed the movies. Take care of them at lunch. Yep. Always make sure I tip them. Like, I've actually heard that people don't tip their moving guys. That's ridiculous. There's a word for those kind of people. It's called scumbag. What, what why would of, you tip the movie man or the barber or anybody else? What, what kind of money did you make as a moving guy? Was it uh, good money or? It depends on the dude. Yeah. And it, here's the funny thing. You could, like, we roll up to a house, and it, it may be a very nice house. And my first thought is, you're retarded because you hired this company and you have a lot of money. Yeah. But that being said, you think, well, we're probably going to get a good tip out of this. And you might, you probably won't. Yeah. And we roll into some other guy's ass, you know, obviously not well off. And those are the guys who, like, couldn't do enough for you. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, and at the end of the day, they'd throw you a 20. And you're like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. We're talking yeah. like 1978. Yeah. And, uh... Well, it's a hard, it's a hard job, man. You're moving. Yeah, you're humping all day You're long. humping all day long. Yeah. At, well, okay, for example, I remember uh, one move that we did... Where my driveway, actually it was two, right? Because I had to move in, then I had to move back. <laughs> As uh, always. The driveway was really long, yeah. man. Really long. Like like 300, 400 feet. Yeah. That was long. Yeah. And uh, they brought a big truck. They couldn't get in the driveway. Uh-huh. They wouldn't have been allowed to put in the driveway anyway. It would have yeah. crushed the, the concrete. But So now they're humping this, and it was uphill. Uh-huh. Out to the truck. Both ways. So coming, <laughs> coming down was easy. But when we were moving out, it was a pain in the butt for these guys. They had to, yeah. You know. So the guy said, if he knew, if he, if it was just, he said, if he knew it was that long, he probably would have rented a little truck. Yeah. So apparently they'll take get the big truck, which they put a bunch of people in. They don't yeah. just put one family in there. It's usually two or three. Oh yeah, right? it's a semi. It's a forty foot semi. Yeah. With a low ride. He so said yeah. he would have rented a smaller truck so he could shuttle stuff back and forth up. And they down did that one time. When we moved into Michigan, they had to do that. They couldn't. We lived on this windy street. Yeah. They couldn't get the semi down there. They bring like an intermediate truck. Now the guys are really humping. Mm-hmm. We had the same issue. We had a long driveway. From the street down to the house, it was high low. Yep. I look out the window. There's one of these freaking retards coming down with a dolly with my refrigerator on it. Zigs when he shoot his eggs. Didn't strap the refrigerator down. In this roll line. Look up just in time to see my refrigerator rolling down the driveway. Oh, my gosh. Luckily, it was not the good refrigerator for the kitchen. It was the garage beer refrigerator. Yeah. Which you still, still works. works, don't you? Yeah, I still works. <laughs> This son of a bitch, I bought this thing from a buddy of mine in 1980, That's who got it from Montgomery Wards. It thinks it's as tall as I am, so, you know, it's a midget refrigerator. That's awesome. It still works. It was in storage for years. It, you plug it in, it works. It's keeping beer cold right now. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I know about that refrigerator is because <laughs> Keith just moved. That's one of the reasons why yeah. we haven't filmed an episode in a while, so Keith moved. Actually moved into this neighborhood we live in right here. Uh-huh. But we're neighbors now. Yeah, and the we're neighbors gonna... are very happy. But <laughs> yeah. we're going to get electric uh, golf carts and have races up and down. The <laughs> um, How many yeah. times have you moved? Uh, five. I did five moves. Really? Yeah, and I, 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 I'm I'm unique in that. Yeah. I, yeah, because I was a Harrier guy. Yeah, that's true. Harriers yeah, yeah. are only. I did Harrier. I, I fixed Harriers for gosh, it was nine years. 
So for that whole nine year period, we didn't move at all. Said, yeah. I went to Cherry Point. I could have went to Cherry Point or I could have went to Yuma, Arizona. Yeah. They didn't do a lot of coast to coast swaps with those cats. Uh -huh. The West Coast guys stay on the West Coast, East Coast yeah. guys stay on the East Coast. Um, so yeah, not as not as many as a lot yeah. of people. I know people go every two or three years. I moved. I, I did think thirty years. So thirteen times. Gee whiz, man. A couple of those were self inflicted moves. I mean. We had the twins. We had to move because the house was too small. Yeah. Because we don't do anything half ass in the Kelly household, so we couldn't have a baby. We had to have two at once. <laughs> and then, you know, with hot rods and motorcycles, we just outgrew the place real fast. So there's three kinds of ways that the Marine Corps will move you. The first one, that basically, you can move yourself. Yeah. All the Diddy move. Diddy right? move. Do it yourself move. We'll right? do it. They'll pay you. You keep Wait all your shit. records. You yeah. gotta like load the truck up yourself. You yeah. take the truck down to the scale. You get it weighed. Yeah. You get empty first. Then you get it loaded up. Then you weigh it full. Then yeah. you gotta put your the, thumb on the scale. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get all the <laughs> paperwork for all that. It's a pain in the butt. And yeah. but people say that they make some money doing that. Sometimes a couple. You know. Sometimes as much as I get too much shit on my doing. Yeah. Well, as you get older and the more stuff you have, the worse that gets. Yeah. The second way, and this is the way I think most people do it, is uh, you you just let the government move you. And when you do that, it's, uh, it, as all of you know who have been in the, in the Marine Corps before, <laughs> that's an adventure, right? So, like I said, I cracked the music up, but basically, it, it requires some supervision because those yeah. dudes will pack anything everything. and yeah. everything, man. You had some weird shit packed, did you? Um, so, yes. Uh, mine, the worst <laughs> one was probably this microwave. So, I guess that morning, I put some food in the microwave to heat it up, and they showed up. And yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah. Uh, and it was leftovers. <laughs> right? Yeah, leftover Chinese. So. Kung Pao stupid. Yeah. Well, Kung Pao stupid. Uh, <laughs> left, left the Chinese food in the <laughs> microwave, and they packed the microwave, and nobody looked inside the microwave. But this gets better, because what happened oh, well, was. Wait, there's more. Yeah, but wait, there's more. <laughs> we were doing an intermediate move. So we were moving, and then we were going to stay there for about a year while we built this house, actually. Uh -huh. That was one of my, this was my last move, well, my second to last move. And. So we moved into the rental place that we were going to rent while the house was finishing being built. Yeah. And we put a bunch of stuff in the garage. We didn't need the microwave. Yeah. So the microwave box, I was like, oh, microwave. Yeah, we'll just leave that in the garage. Yeah. Dude, that microwave sat in the garage for a whole year. <laughs> and then we moved again, and we got to this new house, and we were unpacking stuff. We're like, oh, let's check out this microwave. Boom. We open up the micro microwave box, and it stinks to high heaven, man. <laughs> Not just hot Chinese garbage, but I'm talking about, like... You know, maggots. Yeah, no bugs. Definitely bugs. Yeah, uh, it smelled like you took a chicken and wrapped it in a dirty diaper and <laughs> buried it in the yard and lit it on fire. It With some kimchi mixed in. Thing. Yeah, and the box was full of bugs, like little uh, tiny mite things. Yeah. Like, oh Jesus Christ! So the whole box just went to the dumps. Yeah. Oh yeah. But if you don't watch them, they'll pack anything. Hey, we went. We moved to Germany, so we're in, in Quantico, and we got uh, PCS to uh, Sakur. So I'm going to freaking Germany. Well, you know, they can't drive your shit to Europe. It's got to go pack, warehouse, warehouse, Port Newark up in New Jersey. Yeah. Sits there for a while, gets on a ship, sails to Bremerhaven, sits in a warehouse, into a truck, shows up at your house about four months later. I was going to say, how long did that take? About four months. Four months. No, I take that back because Christy and the kids, yeah, well, I'll say ballpark four months. And as we unpack a box... So you also had to have, like, a little kit of stuff. Oh, yeah. With three kids. Yeah. And, and a fucking say dog. Little, I guess it was a pretty big kit of stuff that you yeah. had to bring with you so that yeah. you had something to... Clothes, toys. Yeah. The Army's pretty good about it because it's not an Army base. They give you, like, intermediate furniture. So they move us into this apartment, and it, it's, it's furnished. Nice. And knowing that your shit's going to show in four months. So then, it, you know, like, a day before, they come and take all their shit out. Oh. And if there's something they want... It's like a loner. Yeah, it is loner furniture. And if there's something you want, like, hey, leave that table here. I'm going to use that for the next three years. I remember that the Marine Corps has something like that through uh, MCSS as well. Where, But you have to go and tell them, hey, I need, like, yeah, lots yeah, yeah. of pans. And, like, yeah. So if you're moving and you're... This is all set. It's like and your package. stuff's in storage, you can go and grab, yeah. like, grab some things to help you while you're yeah. in that intermediate period. But this shit... Yeah, that's so nice we'll, that it was all set up for yeah. like that. We unpack... Open a box up, zzz, same thing. What the hell is that? Well, it was the kitchen garbage from Quantico. Oh, Jesus. They, <laughs> they packed the garbage. garbage. <laughs> Full. The, you know, the garbage can you have in the kitchen, the three-gallon thing. Yeah. There. yeah. Yeah, it was in this Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny shit happens. But, uh, you know, the moving overseas in and of itself is crazy. But I, I got a story for you. You're not going to believe. <laughs> I shouldn't tell. It's just people out there going, I'm never moving again. <laughs> so, 
Christy and I get married. Now I'm on recruiting duty. Poof! <laughs> anyway, I get through it. Uh, it's time to go. I get orders to uh, Coronado. Doing over the horizon raid stuff. I can't wait to go. Everything's going to be great. Well, we're just bring, like, we are newlyweds. We've been married like three months. Yeah. We have wedding gifts we even haven't even unpacked yet. Like, we'll take it out, look at it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's such a man, George. I, 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 I Blend, got a blender. Next, yeah. Blender number two. Yeah, it'll look good. I can use this to stir up carburetor juice. Uh, whatever. Blender number three. We'll sell this. Yeah. One. But the <laughs> flip side of that is, as you know, Christie's an arts. Yeah. So she's got a lot of her art stuff. And she's got some award winning pieces that we're packing. She's a little nervous about this. Ah, don't worry about it. I moved a hundred times. It's going to be fine. Now he's going to be good. Yeah, what did I move? I moved me in a hot rod with two boxes <laughs> in my uniforms in the back of a two hot sea rod. Two seabags. Yeah. Not even. I literally opened the trunk and laid my clothes in it and closed the trunk. I had two boxes of books and a clock radio. Right. What am I moving? Right. So off they go. They pack all our shit up and out they go. I'm in my Alpha's the next day at work because I'm checking out. See ya, bitches. <laughs> Phone rings. Short story long. They burned the moving van. What? Uh-huh. How did that happen? <laughs> so, these jackasses, something was wrong with the trailer. So the driver took it back to the lot overnight, and he was going to get up at zero dark the next morning and head to California. Something wrong with the trailer. Well, by law, they're required to empty the trailer. But the lazy bastards didn't do it, so they're welding on the trailer. Oh my they get God. done welding, and they go home for the night. It's smoldering, 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 catches on fire, burns our shit up. The firemen come beat a hole in the roof of the thing and stick a hose in Oh, my God. Honey, you know I told you everything's going to be okie-dokie? It is not. It's not. <laughs> it is not. What a freaking nightmare that was. Wow. And then it was pre-computer, so they're like, what did you yeah. have in your, in your thing? Well, you know, I, I don't know. So Christy has to go take, like, Sears magazines and cut out pictures and build, like, a dossier of all the shit we had to submit to the Marine Corps as a package. I got some asshole lieutenant colonel lawyer at MCRD San Diego who's busting my balls about this like I'm a, I'm a pain in his ass. Yeah. To the point where I, I went to the colonel and said, either you get a hold of this guy or I'm going to get in trouble as a young captain. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, Keith, I'll handle this. It got sorted out. Everything was fine. Some jerk-off JAG officer, which I shouldn't have to say jerk-off and JAG in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah. That's why they say JAG off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was my worst moving story. Man, that's awful. Yeah. Nothing but that bad for me. I mean, we had things break, you know. This, this, you don't do a move where something doesn't break, right? <laughs> no. Oh, not. man, that thing broke. <laughs> um, I think uh, the, probably the biggest, <clears throat> most expensive thing we had damage to was uh, a Tempur-Pedic mattress. They're supposed to be boxed a certain way. You have to be oh, put, really? put in a bag, put in a box, they have to stand up straight. Is that one of those small Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you always have to yeah. As my movie man days, I can tell you, mattresses always stand up. Yeah, well, I don't think they did that with that. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it came out. <laughs> it was on the street in Birthday Avenue, New Jersey. Yeah, it's a very popular. And people mattress. were bouncing up and down. Me and Mike Wynn. I don't, <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened, but it, it kind of looked like it got run over by a fork. <laughs> If I'm may being have, honest. That may have happened. It's, it's very possible, I suppose, right? But I don't know how, because it was a door-to-door. So the thing oh. got put in the freaking truck and taken out at our house. So I, I don't understand how it could happen, but it's just some big... That's kind of weird. There was a big, weird mark on it, which it looked like a tire mark. Now, is it possible <laughs> that he pushed it up against something and then they... I don't know. Whatever it was, it was damaged enough that... It wasn't good. <laughs> Joe was like, yeah, we, we need to do a claim on that. So yeah. we did a claim. But see, this is post-computer post, uh, computer age, age, right? Yeah. It's almost worse in a way. At least yeah. with that, with your thing, there were people involved. Like, you can get There's these, a human you can talk to. Geez, yeah. Keith, you can get in these fucking loops on the computer, man, where it's like the thing tells you to fill out the form, and then the form, at the end of the form, it says submit it. But then it says you can't submit it until you... You do the other thing. And just, it just ends up in this fucking weird loop on this website where it's like, but I did that. Like, you're yelling at the computer. And like, it's just ridiculous, man. All for a freaking mattress. Bureaucracy. I yeah. mean, and well, those Tempur-Pedic <coughs> mattresses are very Well, they're expensive. expensive as shit, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I wanted to get compensated for that. It wasn't my fault. You guys are moving. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work. You yeah. know, it's like they got And it's a general rule, it does. It does, you're right. Yeah. But the dudes are, they're... It's not that it's not that they're trying to. I don't know what it was like in the '70s, but I'll yeah. tell you, I don't feel like the dudes nowadays are trying to break your stuff. They know we weren't in, or that all, they don't care. No, it's all just kidding aside, they weren't. But you know, these guys, like you said, they're humping all day long. Yeah, and they got a rap shit. So Mike and I would get put on racking duty a lot because yep. they knew we were not, we weren't drunk or high. So we, there's chances we wouldn't break as much shit. Good point. We did drop a piano down a flight of stairs, did but that's another know? story. <laughs> that really happened. 
But, uh, yeah, it. so you, you got to wrap all this shit. And I tell you, the guys who did it the best uh, were the Germans. When we moved out of Germany and we came here, it was oh, that makes sense. I think one, like, coffee cup had a crack in it. This is shit that went on a ship. Right. Those guys, but they wrapped everything. Like they wrapped every fork. They wrapped yeah. every knife. I mean, our, each straw. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but I tell you what, at, we got to this end, and they're unwrapping. We had we had about a Mount Everest of paper when we were done. Yeah, sure. But it was nothing was broken. It was the best move we ever had. Yeah. You know, nice. Very meticulously done. So you uh, so we had one time actually it was it was the last move into this brand new house. We just built this beautiful house. Yeah. And uh, the, we had some, we have like a place in the attic that has a, like a storage area. You can put your Christmas stuff up there yeah, and yeah. everything so you don't have to keep it in the garage. It keeps yeah. it nice. Well, we had like the little chain of guys going up into the attic. Uh -huh. And they're just, do, they had a nice little flow going. I had the music jamming. <laughs> they're having a good time. Everybody ate lunch. Boom. Everybody's happy. And this kid goes and takes a step off the path and puts his <laughs> foot right through my master bathroom chair. <laughs> You know, it's the blowing <laughs> insulation too. So like, there's like a freaking <laughs> a huge freaking. Well, I can think of the money pit when Tom yeah, Hanks right? gets caught in the floor. Well, the first thing I thought was, "Holy shit! I hope he didn't get hurt." Right? Yeah. Because that's the last thing you want is <coughs> yeah. somebody breaking their leg in your house. You yeah. know what I mean? So the kid was good. He felt so bad, man. They came to me like, like a. 1940s movie, like with the hat in the hand. Bob like, Cratchit. Uh, Sir, I have something to tell you. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What's the matter, man? Did you die? Did somebody die? <laughs> uh, we put a hole in your ceiling. Like, All right, well, let's take a look at it. And, you know, it's <laughs> foot sized. <laughs> right? And works through all the uh, drywall. Oh, and all my, that. my wife is like, ah, <laughs> oh my God. So, it took a little while to get that fixed up. Yeah. But that, that was all part of the process. You know, you just you do your claim. Actually, that one was through the the company itself. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, the they're, moving yeah, company. They're like, yeah. look, we're really sorry. We're gonna yeah. take care of this. Or, you know, and they they got us taken and, care of. And they, you know, kids like the last time we moved before this move, kid dropped this big pot for the outdoor flowers or some shit. And he didn't want. I'm, so I'm giving these. I'm giving these guys twenties when they're done. He goes, No, sir, I can't take that. I'm like, Why not? Because I broke that pot. I'm like, Hey, son. Trust me, it's an outdoor flower pot. It's, it's, take the money, you're okay. I mean, the kid felt bad, and I get that. You know, they're not nice kids. You know, it's funny time. Talk about packing and weird shit happening. So, kids are little. We're here at Lejeune, and I'm retiring. Don't ask me why. We had this aquarium that I could have swum laps in. <laughs> but there's no water or fish in it. There it is. I'm not making this up. There's a snake on one side. <laughs> and we had this little Berlin wall made out of, I don't know, like screen or some shit. And a bunch of lizards on the other side. All right. Now I'm looking at this. Me and the dog are sitting there. I got it's my a terrarium. The yeah, it's a terrarium. And the kids are all about it. They're feeding the lizard. They're feeding the snake. And I'm gonna. I used to let play with the snake in the bathtub. Put the stopper in. No water. They'd sit in there and feed the snake pinkies, and they play with the snake. Our house was nuts. So I'm drinking beer with the dog. And I'm going. Yeah, we're just torturing a snake because he sees those lizards. And he wants to eat them. I know he does. Yeah. And the dog's laughing, and I'm laughing, and we don't give a shit. So we go somewhere, we go to Disney World or some shit. We come back. The snake is gone. The lizards are gone, except for the parts that he didn't swallow. Oh, geez. There's like little lizard skeletons in, in their half of the, of the terrarium. And the snake's MIA. And I had your exact same reaction. I am on the floor laughing. Yeah. The kids are like, oh, there's our snake. And Christy's like, Jesus Christ, now we got a snake loose in the house? Hey, what next? So we're laughing like crazy. And eventually, our, uh, it's time to go. Like, a year and a half later, we're PCS. Yeah. So Christy has, like, this epiphany. She looks at me, she goes, holy shit. I'm like, what? She goes, we never found a snake. Yeah, no, it's gone. She goes, no, it's not. You know what's going to happen. One of those four people are going to be moving something or lift out the silverware tray or something. There's going to be a snake three times the size now living in there. <laughs> and they're going to have a heart attack. And, and of course, she, this story immediately takes off in her mind. Like, <laughs> like uh... Doc Green always tells us your mind always goes to the worst possible oh, way. Yeah, He's right. our shrink. Doc, Doc Green's a great guy. And so I, that, my same reaction. I'm laughing my ass off. End of the story, no punchline. They did, we never found a snake. That's funny. I thought, well, we'll find a smolted skin or something. But it was even in June, it gets cold in the wintertime. He escaped in winter. So I guess he uh, he wanted to walk about. and He's either still alive or he died in the cold. Great. Stalin drive for snakes. I All right, know. I got to clean something up. What? Hunter, put me on. All right. So Keith just said our our psychiatrist. Yeah, that sounds really weird. 
It's not. It's Keith and I work at a place where there's also a, a shrink unit staff. shrink on yeah. staff, and he teaches some classes in our course. So that's what he means when he says, "Yeah, we're not our going to the shrink. Not together, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I might hold hands, and we cathartize, and it's very nice. And uh, then we saw a unicorn. Eh. I, I mean, I do go to the shrink. We could do another show on that. Yeah. PTSD is a bitch, but yeah. not together. That's not what he meant. Yeah. So yeah, you should clarify. Doc Green is our friend. Yeah. He works with me and Sal. And the class, we talked about this in an earlier show, Sal and I teach a class, a five-week course that we do once a quarter at, at Marsock. And uh, Doc works with us. He teaches in our class. But he's, he's a funny guy. Oh, man, guy. he's so smart. And he's got a 56-pound brain. So, I, yeah, but he always tells us, the mind always goes to the worst thing. Absolutely. Is that true? And I start thinking about it. Yeah, it does. But anyway, the snake, uh, snake got away. Yeah, the snake got away. That's crazy. <laughs> so... Permanent change of station happens fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes it's like an easy thing. Like your last move was pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You call your buddies. Yeah, you get twenty dudes over. Yeah. you buy beer and pizza. The call the club. The dudes yeah. showed up. Then what did we show up with? Uh, Ten or fifteen pickup Literally, trucks. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. I mean, your pickup truck. I mean, we did that with all the pickup trucks, all the boys. We did the pizza beer thing. It was perfect. Yeah. Everybody uh, now. You got no ramification if somebody breaks something. I'm sure we broke something. I don't, oddly enough, I don't think so. No? All right. Well, think about it. Everybody there is a Marine or yeah, a Corman. True. They've all been through this, so they yeah, know how to move shit. We all know how to do it, right? Yeah. Um, that's kind of the most fun way to do it, I think. If oh, it's a local yeah. move, yeah. it's like, you know, you have a good time. It ends up being yeah. a big blast, really. Get the music set up. Parties set. Um, but <clears throat> it's stressful, man, especially when you're doing it across country. So I can't imagine. You talked about it a couple times. Like, how do you... You got to drive multiple vehicles. Yeah. You got to get the kids. They got to yeah. get new places to live. They got to get new school. All that uh -huh. crap. So, what kind of stress does that put on your family? You know, it's weird. Uh, when the kids were little, it was pretty easy because kids are gummies. You can tell them, "Hey, guess what? We're gonna go up over there, and we're gonna stand in front of a nuclear weapon, and it's gonna go up. It's gonna be cool." And <laughs> all right, like, yay! <laughs> or you go, oh, "We have to go get ice cream now." We don't want ice cream. Ice cream sucks. <laughs> it's all about how you present it. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. But uh, when they're little. Yeah. But the last move, when I retired, the twins were ten, and then it starts getting like we're gonna have to leave our friends. Yeah. That's about the age that shit starts. But before that, you know, we just looked like the Griswolds. We would literally fill up the van with the kids and the dog and coolers of food and coloring yeah. books and, uh, you know, and here come the Griswolds. But yeah, you got two cars. I, you know me. A lot of times I have three cars. Yep. The hot rod, car drive every day, you got the stupid minivan, which is issued, I think, but Marine Corps issues minivans, huh? <laughs> and you got to do all that shit, Yeah. and you're driving cross-country, and everybody wants to, you know, i got to take a piss, and let's stop and see the world's biggest ball of yarn, yeah. and, you know, and they got the movies going in the back, and you know, if I hear the goddamn Dalmatian, what is it, I don't know the Dalmatians and the songs, I'm ready to suck start a 45, <laughs> and I'm not even to, like, Texas yet. And I got Jimi Hendrix in the front blast, and sort of competing noises going on, it looked like a Walt Disney thing with a cartoon from the 30s where the van's like doing this down yeah. the road and music notes are coming out the windows. <laughs> it's pretty easy. I mean, everybody, it's, I'd be honest, who's the, the guy who needs to get a Navy commendation medal out of that is the, the wife. Yeah. No, you're right about that. <clears throat> they do all that shit. I look for any excuse. I get, with, it, with luck, you're deployed when the move goes down. <laughs> right. And, and that's happened, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, so the last piece I'll say is, uh, so... The, the moving company, no matter what, even if you're going to let them move all your stuff, they're not going to move anything that's like chemicals. They're not going to move anything that's nope. like um, weapons, ammunition, food, and they won't move any perishable food. So yeah. there's still always some component that is a little bit of a ditty move. Like uh, you got to get a little U-Haul trailer. You got to load yeah. it up with all like the bleach and they won't move motorcycles. And oh, how, so did you have motorcycles when you were in, or was that when you? Uh, were no, no, but, but I have hot rods. So you'd have to get your freaking bike on a trailer and take it yourself as yeah. part of one of your vehicles as well. Or there's it. companies that ship it for you, I which see. oddly enough, is, I've done it three or four times since apparently nobody told me I was retired and I keep moving every three years. That's hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is it though. Yeah, this is it. This yeah. is the forever house. But yeah, you just, you get a company and they, they move it. They, they come with a semi and yeah. it's very well done. But if you got two cars or going to Germany. I'm in Quantico. I got this Z28, souped-up Z28. I can't take a journey. You only take one car. Mm. And you know it's the minivan. Sure. And, uh, but they would have, this is how weird, they would take a Harley. I'm like, I'm not taking a Harley <coughs> journey. It snows nine months a year. Jeez. 
But yeah, I can take a Harley to Germany if I move across country. But somebody told me that's changed now. They will move motorcycles now. Interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, so if I had to sell the Z28, well, I'm going to do it three years. I mean, I'm going to store it for three years. Yeah. So. And then the last thing I'll say about this, uh, the moving company, is they will also unpack all your stuff for mm -hmm. you. It's part of the contract with the military. Yeah. So if you didn't know that, and you're getting ready to PCS move, you can have them unpack everything. Everything. Again. Yeah, so you can, they'll spend a whole nother day unpacking, unwrapping every piece of silverware, putting yeah. it back in the drawer and all that stuff. Yeah. I've never done that because at the new house, we usually don't know exactly where we want yeah. everything to go and yeah. stuff. So we're just like, just put it over, just put, that goes in that room. That's all we do too. Yeah, just put yeah. that in that room, put that in that room, and then we'll just take care all of it. All I have to do is I have to put the beds back together. Yeah, absolutely. And hook up the washer and dryer. Yeah. Other than that, yep. see you fellas, here's your money, get out of my house. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, as quick as possible, please. Yeah. So I can start drinking. Yeah, which, <laughs> speaking of drinking, I think it's just about time to do that. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, think about this. Military people, the biggest sacrifices, yes. There's mm -hmm. also a ton of these little tiny sacrifices. <laughs> right? And it's 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 ridiculous, but man, these things, over the course of a 20-year career, it adds up. Yeah. You move the kids, you move the wife, or you got to make new friends, you got to get a new job. Yeah. So, my hat's off to them. All right. Absolutely. Good to see you, Sal. All right, buddy.